Hi, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to Notes from a Ghostwriter. We've got a really fun and informative show planned for you tonight. Uh, joining us, as uh, always, is Robert DeSantis, our producer, and we have a very special guest tonight, uh, Sandy Lene of Thin Veil Investigators. Um, hi, Sandy. Hi, Rob. Hi. 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 How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for be being here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I um, just one second. I'm just losing something here. Okay, I'm losing my voice actually. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about that. Okay, um, before we chat, I'd uh, just like to start off with our regular segment on haunted locations. And uh, please feel free to comment if uh, if you're interested. Uh, tonight, I'd like to introduce you to some haunted buildings and locales in Arcadia, California. And I'd like to give uh, credit to the Shadowlands.net for this compilation. Uh, in Arcadia. Uh, We have the Arboretum on uh, Baldwin Avenue. This was once the home of Chief Buffalo Child Longlands, a 1930s actor. He claimed to be a Native American, but he was exposed by a reporter to be African American, and this drove him to suicide. His ghost has been seen by many, including Aaron Spelling. The house was used as Mr. Work's house on the TV show Fantasy Island. Uh, Arcadia High School is said to be haunted by a janitor who walks the kitchen and indoor cafeteria. Students say they have actually encountered the ghost, and it is said late at night, if you're in the foyer, you can hear him walk up and down the kitchen and cafeteria, pushing a squeaky cart with cleaning tools rattling in it. There is a general Arcadia poltergeist. In May 1976, on a memorial night, rocks of all sizes started lifting off the ground and hitting places, people, and breaking windows in cars and houses. No one was able to explain it. It was happening off and on for three months. This phenomena was investigated by Duke University and was written up in the LA Times, apparently in a six-week series. There is not much info on this event, and there was no explanation given to the people who were attacked by the strange occurrence. It was merely covered up and forgotten. Strange. (laughs) The Derby Restaurant is haunted on East Huntington. Uh, George Wolfe also known as the Iceman, bought the Derby restaurant in 1938. The famous jockey died eight years later after suffering fatal injuries when he was thrown off a horse at the Santa Anita Raceway. Employees are convinced he is still looking over his old restaurant. Footsteps can be heard going up the stairs to his old living quarters above the restaurant and his presence is felt throughout the building. Another school haunting, First Avenue Middle School. The school used to have a pool, but someone drowned in it, and it was covered over. Teachers said they've heard footsteps at night through the halls, even after they've set the alarm. Loud banging on the lockers and girls' locker room doors have also been heard, and water goes on and off by itself. The toilets also flush by themselves. Lockers with locks on them are closed one minute and open the next, even when there's no one else in the room. Some students have seen a figure of a little boy wandering through the halls late at night with a green glow to him. Uh, The Santa Anita Mall, again in Arcadia, the Westfield Shopping Mall, another name for it. Uh, The toy store inside the Santa Anita Mall is said by employees to be haunted by a little boy in early 1930s clothing. An employee was uh, closing the store at night when they spotted a little boy in knickers in one of the aisles playing with one of the toys. The employee was shocked and thought he was left behind by a parent, and when she approached the little boy to ask him where his parents were, he appeared to be transparent and disappeared as she got close. Another sighting of the little boy was again after hours when two male employees of the mall were inside Macy's and happened to spot a little boy standing with his back to them by the escalator to go down, as though in awe of the escalator. When they started to walk up to him to tap him on the back, the little boy ran down the escalator without actually having touched the steps and vanished once at the bottom. And another restaurant, the Taco Lita. The men's restroom is said to be haunted by an elderly man wearing a yellow sweater, say a few witnesses on the web. Many have seen him walk into the bathroom but haven't actually seen him in there. Okay, that's what I have for Arcadia. If anyone has any more information, please email me at jujana at arcanamatrix.com or email the show directly. Um, I've actually had some requests for specific haunted places from some of our listeners, and I'll uh, make a point to research them for upcoming shows. Uh, it's good to know what's uh, lurking in our own backyards, I think, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to know, yes. <laughs> yeah. So once again, everybody, please let me introduce a dear friend of mine uh, for many years, Sandy Lene. Hello, everybody. When, uh, hi, Sandy. 
uh, when I uh, need a psychic reading, this is the first lady I turn to. Uh, Sandy reads clairvoyantly from Crystals and Gemstones and has been honing the special craft since about 1984. Is that right, Sandy? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Uh Yeah. In addition to about 114 different stones, Sandy also uses a feather, a manzanita stick, coral, and seashells in her readings, Mm -hmm. with each piece being programmed with its own meaning. You can visit Sandy at www.sandyspsychicstones, all one word, dot com, for more info on her readings and services. In addition, Sandy is a member of Thin Veil Investigators in Carson City, Nevada, and I can't wait to hear more about her work. Why the name Sandy Thin Veil Investigators? <clears throat> well, that name is chosen um, because that's how we really interact with the other side. Um, Usually, you know, the the veil is thinnest. That's the story, how it goes on Halloween night. But mm-hmm. because our team members are so intuitive and sensitive, um, actually that veil is thinnest for us every day of the year. So uh-huh. that kind of, um, with us working on the other side, that name really fits with what we do. Yes. Is there any truth to the uh, fact that the veil thins at midnight or on certain moon phases? Well, I believe that's that's the story, and that's the way it goes. Um, usually, a lot of us uh, on the team, when we do get <laughs> to that time of night on Halloween night, we really feel a lot more than. Um, well, I can't really say we feel a lot more than we usually do, but maybe there's mm-hmm. just more um, activity and busyness going right. on. Mm-hmm. That's coming up soon. You must be excited. <laughs> oh yes, Halloween's my favorite time of year. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, when was the team first established? Well, it's been established since November of 2005, but quite a few of us has been um, a ghost hunting individually for many, many years. So together we make a pretty good team because we're really in tune and really in sync with each other. We um, we work real good, and we need each other to verify and clarify and also to keep each other safe. Of course. Yeah. That's, that's a really important point, yes. It, it really is. Yeah, I'd never go ghost hunting alone. It's 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 always best to go in pairs or threes. Right. Somebody to <laughs> hold on to. Yeah, exactly. I, I tend to get very scared. I need people to hang on to. Oh, there have been times where, yeah, we need to turn around and leave. <laughs> Definitely. Well, how many team members on uh, on the team? We have six. Um, we have five women and one man. And um, we work really good together. Um, some we've known for many years, and some um, we've just known for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And what is your role with the Thin Veil team? Well, I'm a psychic, okay, and I'm what they call a clairsentient. I smell, I know, I see, I hear. Um, and I was asked to join the team a couple of years ago because um, I can see those who have crossed over. Um, it's part of my job as a psychic. I have clients that come to me wanting to know uh, if a friend or a loved, you know, a loved one, a family or a friend um, has crossed over and how they're doing, um, I happen to be able to see the people on the other side in great detail. And that so, on a amazing. ghost hunt, I can pick out, um, oh, just, it just, you know, who we're talking with, you know, male, female, what they look like. Mm-hmm. Wow, that doesn't scare you? Um, no, actually, it's no. pretty cool because. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, really, I'm really happy for my gifts that I can do that. Um, and then sometimes, too, they won't show themselves to me, but I can sense that they're there. Mm-hmm. You know, I just kind of, like, know what they look like. Um, but it's really fun when 